Michael, some say that human consciousness, our self-awareness, is a critical piece of datum that we must explain in order to understand reality. Do you agree with that? Uh, not completely. I, in fact, I would tend to disagree with it. I think it's important to know who the observer is and what the potential biases of the observer are. So in this case, we're talking about us, and we do have cognitive biases. We perceive and misperceive the world through our uh, senses and our brain. So it's good to know something about that. But even if it was some extraterrestrial doing the observing or it was God doing the, doing the observing, the reality exists independent of the observer. And so although it's important to know something about the observer, it isn't the critical factor in my opinion. I noticed you had little quotes around the word God. Uh, did I see that correctly? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm skeptical of the existence of God. But if there is a God, because I can't prove that there isn't, then there's a God's eye view of things. And I think if if God is observing nature, he's or she is seeing the same thing we are. Uh, although perhaps our observations are slightly colored by our cultural biases or whatever, once you factor those in, the reality still exists. So if I would take two separate worlds, our world with human self-awareness, you and I talking here and understanding each other, and another world which was exactly the same, but there was no consciousness whatsoever, zero, you would say that the explanation of both worlds could be the same? It is the same, absolutely. We don't affect it that much. It's the same reality. Yeah, but the issue is whether the nature of consciousness, this self-awareness, is a piece of information that must be explained, as opposed to using that consciousness to understand. I agree with that. But do we have to explain the fact of this self-awareness in what is otherwise an inert physical world? No. Why? <laughs> because I don't think that there's any evidence to show that human consciousness alters reality in any fundamental way. But is it an important part of reality, a fundamentally different part of reality, that we must explain as part of our explanation of reality? I think it's interesting to know something about the observer, but that it's not a sub substantive effect that we have to account for or say that it completely alters the nature of reality. I don't think it's that important. Look, there's, there's this idea that somehow science is completely socially constructed. And then there's the idea that science is totally objective. I think both of these views are wrong. Mm -hmm. But that one is wronger than the other one. <laughs> and the idea that it's completely constructed by humans and consciousness or whatever is wronger than the idea that it's completely objective. But what about the absolute understanding of consciousness itself? Not that consciousness is an important part of the observation, but the explanation of how you get consciousness, is that something that is a fundamental part of reality that needs to be explained independently of the observer? Is, it, is, it, is this a, a critical part of reality like, like the law of gravitation? We have to explain gravity as a fundamental principle of reality, right? Yes. Do we also have to explain consciousness in a similar way like we have to explain gravity? In, in what context? In the context of studying some cosmological idea or in the, in, just in psychology? If we're looking at it from a standpoint of what are the fundamental factors of reality? We have gravity, we have strong forces and weak forces in the, in, in the nucleus, oh, oh. We, we have, uh, we have uh, electromagnetism. These are fundamental things in right. the world. Do we add consciousness? Do we add to that? consciousness no. to that list? No, that would just be ridiculous, in my opinion, just silly. Uh, I, I mean, th there's the natural world, there's the different theories about the natural world, and then there's sort of the meta meta level of shouldn't we take into account the fact that I'm an American rather than a European, or I'm a male rather than a female doing the observing? Yeah, it's kind of interesting, and it plays you know a tiny little part in our understanding of the natural world, but it isn't like on the same level as a law of nature, or one of the forces of, of the natural world. Many people think that. I know, but they're wrong. You're I, think, I think that they have overdone, overstated the idea that we affect the natural world by our very observations. I think we do, but not in any substantive way that has to completely override our theories. Remember, there, there are two different views here. One is us as the observer affecting the world, and I agree with that.
The other is whether consciousness is this independent, separate force or entity that must be explained uh, along with gravity and electromagnetism. Oh, well, I would just put it as more of a quantitative difference from all other living organisms and their thought processes generated by their brains. I wouldn't say it's any, anything qualitatively different from anything else in the biological world, starting from a handful of neurons in a little ganglion all the way up to primate brains and then our brain. I would just say it's an ex extrapolation and extension of that whole research, but not something wholly different that deserves some like supernatural <laughs> or metaphysical category all, all in itself. I think that's too anthropocentric. Now, there are two categories of people that uh, would think that consciousness is important. We have the very large number of religious believers who believe in immortal souls or spirits or different kinds of gods, and they strongly believe in some non-physical consciousness. Then there's a whole other group of people who have studied consciousness and who believe that it has an independent existence. You would discount both of those groups, put them in the same category, and put them on the shelf and say they were, that, that's some vestige of history. Uh, they're dualists. I would just say they're medieval dualists. The idea that there's something existing in our heads that goes beyond a bunch of neurons firing. Granted that the problem of explaining how a bunch of neurons firing generates what you and I are doing right now, that's a hard problem, but that doesn't mean it's an insoluble problem. To go from there to there's something else, uh, I don't think is warranted by the evidence. I think it's, it's in our nature to be dualistic. We even use the language of my mind. It, it, somehow that's different from my brain, or my arm is different from what me. There's my and arm, like they're two different things. Well, no, it's all one package deal, but the language makes us think that there's something else. That's just an artifact of language.